Hello, so I have an eBay delivery here. I think I know what it is, I hope I know what it is, and I hope it's ThinkPad related. Huh, <laughs> think. Anyway, let's open up and have a look. Chipping them. Oh. So what do we have? That's oh heavy. We have a floppy drive with no cable, just a random little floppy drive. Yeah. We have a cable. That is not related to the floppy drive. Okay. We have oh a cable. Oh that looks like it is related to the floppy drive. Yes. Random packaging, more packaging. Oh, ah, this is what I was after. IBM, obviously, CD ROM. Oh, it's got CD in it. Paints Ball Challenge. I have no idea what that is, but it's published by E2. Ink 2006, but look, it's a little lovely little IBM CD drive. I think it takes batteries. Maybe that's metal at the bottom. It's got a, like a game port on the back, and oh, there you go, there's the there's this cable. way around. There's that cable. It's cool, isn't it? Packaging, packaging, packaging. And a ThinkPad. Just check any of the packaging before we have a closer look. Uh, give it to the guy. I'm not going to complain about his packaging. It might have taken extremely long time about the time to get here because it went completely wrong by UPS, but we have a oh look. That goes in an ID PC card. There we go. States this in. Oh, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad at all. Clean. No cracks. A little rattle inside, but that's not that unusual. We have infrared. Oh, that must be that floppy computer. Yep, that's a fluffy character. We got PS2 mouse, Kensington lock, serial parallel VGA, missing screws. Oh, that's not a bad good sign, is it? Volume, 
mic, headphone, PCMCA, nothing on the front. A little patch there, a little um, hatch there, a sticker that's moved. Weird. Battery doesn't want to come out. So I have that connected to find, and it says there 16 volts. So I need to find a 16 volt laptop connector. Let's just try it on. You never, you never know. Nil poids. Nothing. Let me find a power supply. Okay, amongst my box of power supplies, I seem to have a 16 volt one. IBM logo, one of the old ThinkPads I've got. I'm not sure to ThinkPads to be honest. Let's plug it in. No lights, still no lights, aha, lights, oh, so you can't see that, so let's go, oh wow, that sounds horrendous, 24 meg, 161163 is a hard drive. I'm not surprised, surprised if you heard the noise of that hard drive. Let me turn it off now and again. You can have a listen to it. That doesn't sound good, does it? Let's take it to bits. going to focus of course it's not come on no. it's not going to be snap there. I can try gluing that. But there's the hard drive. Most important part. Don't know how this keyboard is held down. piece of plastic this laptop seen better days I can, I can assure you that but this hard drive how does this hard drive come out it's one 
screw there. That makes it loose. And there we go. So it's a Hitachi drive. K226 32U. Not much of a clue on capacity there. 32U, 320 meg. Don't know. Let's find another drive similar size to fit. So the only drive I've got is a 60 gig drive, which is obviously way too big for this. I've got that out of an old. Toshiba Libretto and that is broken. Let's see how this 60 gig drive works. I'll be shocked if it works. Everything's in bits. Something stuck to it there and it's gone forever. One six one one six three. That is date and time, I think. Twenty twenty one. Oh nine. Oh two. Twenty one fifty. Oh oh. Six one one six three again. Still not happy. Hard drive is spinning. One six one and one six three. definitely a CMOS battery so I'm going to leave this plugged in for a minute see if it charges the battery I have no idea where the battery is see, uh, this keyboard doesn't want to come up any angle could be screws underneath that label it might be why the label has moved maybe this whole machine is just knackered Oh, that key there is broken, isn't it? Angle of that. Hmm. It's year 82222 compliant. Let's just leave it running for a little while, see if it charges the battery. So it's at this point that I realise that I've got a 900 meg video recording of the next step of video which has um, become corrupted I can't play it, can't import it into DaVinci, can't play it in VLC, nothing anyway so what happened after all that was the battery was underneath next to the RAM which you saw earlier and I had to order them in because I had these funny little CR2011 tiny little batteries and I had nothing that would um, fit in there um, because the machine simply would not boot past 161 or 163 error um, with a flat battery put a new battery in and the error stopped but I still couldn't boot this machine and I spent quite some time trying to work out why machine wouldn't boot it would the floppy drive light would come on but it wouldn't actually boot but what's so bizarre is the model 70 reference disc booted absolutely fine um, no, but no matter what other boot disc I made on the same floppy drive that I made the reference disc on I couldn't boot anything 
did a little bit of research <clears throat> and it turns out if you put a drive in this machine bigger than 8 gig then it just hangs on the BIOS screen simple as that so I found a I've searched for all my old junk and I found a 6.5 gig drive it said win 98 SE I was stuck on a bit of masking tape on the front of it and um, stuck it in and it worked simple as that so I put the machine all back together I did a clean install of Windows 98 so it had the, the cabs on there so I renamed the old Windows folder and did a fresh install Windows and then installed the drivers and that's where I'm up to here now so here's the next day and here's the machine fully built fully working yeah. what a beautiful little setup this is there's a floppy drive plugged into the port on the side we have a CD drive plugged into the IDE PCMCA card this isn't just any CD drive runs off batteries it actually has this battery pack but it's NICAD that's struggling to hold a charge at the moment but not only does it have batteries well it needs batteries to run off when the, obviously the laptops are on batteries you can plug power into the back of it but look at this it has a joystick port the machine does have a joystick port so you might be wondering well, how does a joystick port work over an IDE connection well this has quite a few ports in this microphone line in line out power volume lock I'm going to stop myself opening headphones line out and something I don't know what that is R oh, and output this has a built-in sound card an ESS1688 sound card which is actually exactly the same as the sound card that's on the machine so you can plug this into a machine uh, yeah it's a machine that doesn't have a sound card and it gives it sound and CD how cool is that I'll show you there is an 8x20x stereo CD-ROM joystick port, 8x20x stereo CD-ROM ESX1688 audio drive and an ESX1688 audio drive um, the built-in one works in DOS you just do Blaster 225.1 Sound Blaster Pro don't think it's 16, no Sound Blaster Pro compatible this only works in Windows as far as I can tell and it was hard work finding the drivers for this. If anyone needs them, I now have them. Um, but yes, the machine is fully working. Floppy works. I've left the hard drive in there, the 6 gig one that I had, um, I found yesterday. I don't know if I've ever put combat flash in, might do. Um, but yes what a nice little machine screen isn't amazing it actually looks brighter on camera than it does in real life but it's just the contrast of it now if it's a, it's a tft it's not a dual scan but it's windows is all right but let's do um let's find the old phil's computer lab um dos bench and you can see in a couple of games what it looks like here I'm in DOS I do Doom Max Details so Doom's not too bad, Doom's not too dark a game really is it I need to work out to do um, screen expansion as well not worked that out yet I 
Dune's perfectly playable. As it should be on a Pentium 133. One thing that's not very playable though. Game of the moment, Quake. It runs perfectly smooth, it's just it's so dull. I know Quake is brown anyway, but this screen just seems to make the brownness even more brown. Let's brighten it up a bit. But that's perfectly playable with 320 by 240. Just works, um, just all your work. It's loud enough to play with, but it's not great quality. Let's just turn it down. So I want video options. Don't have 640 by 480. What's that? Visa drivers? I got a 600 days. It's not a good expansion. It's, it's like pink. It doesn't go where I could do that. Yeah, it's just like pink. Yes, yeah, it's just a little bit blocky, but you know, I might have to live with this. to see if you would help the side text squiggle one uni bbe 67 Flashy flashy. Trident Cyber 9382 L C D PCO one meg, twenty-four bit DAC, it's on clock. Cool. Quake uh, time demo six forty by four eighty. Does it work now? It does. Badly. But there you go, 640 for 80. Hmm. That's a little slow, isn't it? It actually looks better in person, doesn't the camera now? Let's try turning out the lights. It's not a great screen. It's very flashes green. 
Is that the panel doesn't need to do it? No, move it. I think it's just the poor tridentness. If that's a word. Eleven frames a second. There you go. Is this any different with a VBE, Uni VBE running? What did I get? 10.4 last time, wasn't it? Let's expand it out to fill the screen. I think I'll leave that on. Ten point four, same. Pentium one three three. I just found a DOS kind of BIOS settings. And how horrible was this? It's a little program called PS2. I love its name, but there you do PS2, then you gotta do one of these. That PS2 question mark screen. Current state CRT. Well it's not. But there you go. PS2 audio. Oh right, two twenty five one. So I changed that. Okay. PS2. What's presentation? Presentation mode. Well, there you go. This is one of the examples where the expansion just looks a bit ropey. It may not be sharp there, but it's all blocky and all horrible. Change music. Um, number 16. Happy with that. Well, they seem to 2000 you can set Sunbus 16, and when you've only got a pro, it still seems to work. Yeah. Make a boot disk, I think. Mouse. Need a mouse driver. Suso Averno. Interesting. Said a thousand times before, but I just love the SimCity 2000 music. I'm going to 
have to take the screen to bits. It's a tough level this bar thing, isn't it? Everything just burns down. This looks fine. Oh, pinkness. <laughs> Obviously, a crack version on here. No sound. This is an example of a game not liking the Soundblast 16, ESS 1688 audio drive. Soundblast the Pro. It's pretty loud, really. I love this game. Just play it on the old PS2 with a did I? Yeah, I sure did with a PC speaker. It was so impressive how good a PC speaker was. It's like mod music. Oh come on. Never notice there's a higher resolution though. I don't think I like it. It seems kind of squash. Never noticed this is the full resolution high. So, anyway, there you have it. Fully working, apart from slightly iffy screen, but it's not bad enough to. I think for me to worry about taking it apart yet. If it gets worse, then maybe, but right now it's absolutely fine. I've got a nice little CD ROM drive. I'll, um, it's multi session as well, I've been writing to the same CD over and over again, Windows 10, and it happily reads the editions. I could even use it as a Walkman. <laughs> little LCD screen there, and transport controls there, so we wind forward, stop and play and pause, and eject little lock so I don't undo it. Now that is proper ultimate retro geekiness there isn't it? Having that as a Walkman. Quite suit me though, I quite like it. So anyway, winners do not use drugs. <laughs> oh dear. 
Good old digital illusions. Was it an Amiga game first, wasn't it? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I have now reached 100 subscribers, which kind of blows my mind a bit. I can't believe there's 100 people would want to watch me try and fix broken old computers, but there we go. Until next time, goodbye.